Hey guys, what is going on? It's Johnny Two Thumbs 17 here, bringing you episode 9 of my Football Manager 2018 Unemployed Challenge, also known as the Journeyman. I am currently in Russia, managing SKA Khabarovsk. This is my technically my second season with the game. Uh, with the game. Second season with the team, excuse me. I did take over sort of midway through the season last year. So this is really sort of my first full season with any team actually in this game. I'm already in season three and I've never had a full season with a team. So super excited about that. This was my first transfer window and I kind of went a little bit crazy. We will get to that in a minute. Uh, but first, just wanted to say thank you guys. As of the recording of this video, I am up to 60 subscribers on the channel, which is awesome. Uh, so just want to say thank you guys. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the series and enjoying the channel. And I'm having a lot of fun doing it, you know, trying different things, trying the blogging, being active on Twitter, all sorts of stuff. Uh, super excited about that. So thank you once again for the support. I am super, super appreciative about that. But enough about all that gushy, mushy, mooey, gooey stuff. Let's get into what you guys want to see. Let's go ahead and check out those transfers. I did mention that this is my first summer transfer window and I did go crazy. There is a little bit of a, me a method behind my madness. Uh, so we'll quickly go over things. Let's go ahead and take a look at our transfers. Okay, I know. There's a lot. All right. <laughs> I really changed up the locker room this past summer. I may have gone overboard. I may have gone a little bit crazy, but I promise there is a reason for it. Uh, first of all, the club lost a ton of money last season. I think we lost like three million. Uh, we made no profit at all. We were just financially in a horrible, horrible position. So I had to make some changes. So we did sell players amounting to 1.2 million. It's not a ton we sold a couple of guys for a decent amount of change but a lot of them are older players periphery players so we didn't get quite that much money for them but still 1.2 million ain't too bad and we only spent 180 million on incoming transfers so that ratio is pretty dang good uh, the second reason is that we had some absolutely ridiculous ridiculous contracts i don't know what the previous coach or gm or whoever it was that was in charge was thinking but there were just some ridiculous ridiculous contracts on this team and i couldn't justify playing some of these paying some of these players that much especially some of the people that weren't even paying or uh, well i can't i keep i can't say pain and playing especially some of these players that weren't even playing some of the contracts they had uh, coming in we had this guy i didn't even notice this because it took me a while to get to the reserve team you know not the best job on my part but we had this guy sitting in our reserves who was making i think one hundred and thirty thousand. Uh, for the season and he wasn't even playing he was marked as not needed and he was retiring he was just basically like oh yeah i'm just here i'm just gonna sit on this mountain of cash and not do anything and then i'll retire so we had some contracts like that that just had to get that i just had to get rid of and the third reason is i i had to unload some of the like sort of cancers within the team and you all know that i'm looking at Damon Co. I told you guys last episode I had an issue with him. He had an issue with me. Just every single game he was complacent. He was churning off or switching off. He just did not care at all. He was causing all sorts of headaches for me in the locker room. And there's a couple of other players like that. Damon Co was definitely, he was the biggest influencer, the most well-known player. And he was just sort of the biggest instigator in all those locker room troubles. So I had to dump him as soon as I could. So with all these players going out, you know, we had to replace them. So we brought in a ton of players. Now, not all of these people on this list are good first teamers. Not all of them are even in the senior squad. A lot of them are prospects. So as of the recording of this video, I did decide to go ahead and sort of do a look at these players on Twitter. Um, like I've said in previous videos, if you guys want the latest news, be sure to follow me on Twitter. That's at johnny 2 thumb 17 the link for that and my other social media are in the description below. Um, so I won't go over, I won't spend too much time on these players. As of right now, as the, rec the recording of this video, I've already done the prospects. Um, so I still have to look at some of our filler players as well as the first team and key players. So that will be coming up. That all should be out before this actual video gets out. Real quick though, for people that haven't seen that, let's go ahead and just take a real quick look at some of these guys. I won't get in 
too much depth. Like I said, I've already done that on Twitter. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. You guys got to follow me everywhere to get the whole experience. But real quick, let's go ahead and look at some of these guys. Uh, I'll do the same thing I did on Twitter. We'll start with the prospects and work our way to the key players. Uh, start to go from like the least influential to the most influential. Save the best for last. So first up, we have uh, Ruslan Konovalov. A very, very exciting prospect here. You see, yeah, I think overall he's extremely well-rounded. He is only 15. We brought him in for $650 in absolute steal at 15. I think he has a very, very strong foundation already. Super excited to see his growth. I think with the right tutoring and the right development that this guy could become an absolute beast. I don't get too excited about too many prospects uh, just because I view most of them as projects. And a lot of times my youth intakes are absolutely horrible because we are playing with, you know, sort of like lower league teams. Uh, but I'm very, very excited about this guy. He's not, I, I'm not going to say he's like a wonder kid or anything like that. But if you've been following me on Twitter for a while, you'll know that last year in my offline save, the one that I did on Twitch for a little bit, we had a wonder kid, Yoshida. And honestly, this guy is not a wonder kid, but that's sort of the excitement I have for him. It's just been so long since I've had a young prospect that has a ton of potential. Uh, so super excited about this guy. We'll see how well I can develop him. But like I said, at 15, I think, you know, I think he has a very, very solid uh, foundation to build upon. So we'll definitely be checking in with this guy. He is going to get a few starts for us early on, uh, just because right now, as much as I've changed the squad, as many players as I have brought in, I'm still not done. I'll get to that in a minute, but I am still going to have to bring in a few more players. But for right now, this guy is going to get a handful of starts for us. Uh, so super excited about this guy. So next up, we have Lafemme Nikita Maligan. Uh, unfortunate name for him, as I am going to be constantly referring to him as Lafemme Nikita, because that is just too perfect of a nickname for him. Uh, he wants to play as a target man. Definitely not going to happen. He's only five foot eleven. I say only five foot eleven. That's how tall I am. But he's not six foot. If you're not six foot, you're not a target man. That's just the way it is. He also only has a jumping reach of eight and you know strength of twelve. He's not a target man. We're going to switch him over to an advanced forward, forward, which I believe he is much more suited for. Has some decent potential. He is pretty young. I. <sighs> I'm not sure how much more he's going to grow. I think he's going to grow mentally. I think he's going to grow uh, technically. I think he's young enough. He's obviously going to grow some physically as well. Why am I even bothered? I'm saying he's going to grow everywhere. He's going to grow everywhere. He has a possible four-star potential. More likely, he's probably going to be either 3 to 3.5. I think he will develop into a useful player, perhaps not a star. But I think he has, you know, I don't think he's that far off from being just a pretty, pretty solid player all around. Next up, we have a pair of Americans, uh, both fullback, strangely enough. First up is 19-year-old Paul Hesmer. I am not sure if I'm going to keep this guy as a fullback, to be honest. Uh, just looking at his stats, you know, I don't think he has a t the technical ability to be a fullback. I mean, look, especially if you look at his things like his dribbling is currently only at four. You know, his crossing is good enough. His passing is only at five. You know, composure of four. I'm just not sure if this guy is a fullback, sort of. He's not fullback material unless we play him as sort of like that super defensive fullback. But that's not the kind of player that I want. Physically, he screams central defender. He's six foot three. He has 14 strength, 14 jumping. He has pretty good tackling at 11. Okay positioning. We'd like to see that go up, but he is only 19. He has room to grow. But again, there are holes in his game. His composure is horrible. His determination is lacking. His marking is only five. That's not good enough at all for a central defender. His heading is only six. Um, so honestly, I'm thinking I might go defensive mid with this guy. I'm not sure what role though at the moment. If you guys have any ideas uh, where you see this guy playing, let me know in the comments because I'm definitely open for suggestions. Um, like I said, I just don't see him as the sort of fullback that I'm looking for. I think there are too many holes defensively for him to be a central defender. I'm really looking at his size and his physical presence. And I'm just thinking, I'm thinking DM is the right role, was the right uh, position, excuse me, just not sure on what role. So if you have an idea, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Let me know what you guys think on this guy. Let's go ahead and go to the second American here. And that is Alfie Reynolds. Again, another fullback, 18 year old American this time. 
I think this guy is much more suited for that fullback role than Hesmer. Uh, pretty good defensive abilities, pretty good mental abilities. He has a very strong, uh, I was going to say physical presence again, but that's not right. Physical foundation. Uh, as a fullback, would definitely like to see his pace uh, increase. And I would like to see his in agility increase as well. I'm rushing through this, so I'm kind of struggling. Apologies. I think he's young. He has room to grow. You know, maybe we'll get him a game here or there. But yeah, I think he just, I think this guy has a very, very solid foundation. Again, he has that four star possible potential. Again, this is probably another player we're looking at three, three and a half stars. Uh, maybe not a superstar in the future, but I think he'll develop into a pretty strong, uh, just like an everyday, just solid player. I'm kind of surprised I got these Americans, got them both on freeze surprised an MLS team wasn't out there, you know, willing to take a chance on them, but everybody's loss is my gain. So we're almost done with the prospects here. Uh, the, the next two are sort of older prospects that have lower ceilings. Uh, so we'll go through them real quick. We have Manville to Anvil. You know, there's some holes in his game. He's a striker. You know, we see issues with his vision. We see issues with his concentration. His physicals perhaps aren't as well developed as I would like to see, but he has a sort of a, a knack for putting the ball in the back of the net. That's, you know, something that's hard to teach, that sort of killer instinct. He has the ability to score. Whether or not the rest of his game develops and allows him to do so is another question. Uh, so again, just kind of, he's technically a hot prospect. We aren't expecting the world of him. Uh, just kind of seeing how far he grows. Uh, I think playing time is going to be critical for his development. We'll try to get him into a few games. But yeah, I think, you know, this is a guy we're just kind of, kind of wait and see on. Very much so the same story with our last prospect who's I need a, I need a nickname for this guy. So again, if you're commenting, if you've gone down and you're commenting, telling me where Hesmer should play, uh, give me a nickname for this guy because I cannot say these names. Um, I would guess it's like uh, Jambulat Dula, Dulaev. I spit saying that because that's how much I struggle with this name. Uh, so give me some nicknames. Again, this is a guy, he has much bigger holes in his game than Manville the Anvil. You see his vision is absolutely awful. His concentration is bad. Anticipation is not where it should be. He's going to have room to grow, but he's not going to be a great player. Still, this is a guy that, you know, he knows how to finish. That's something I like. So maybe he's just the guy we develop, try to make into a super sub of sorts. Somebody that we could just bring off the bench that we know, hey, this guy has goals in him. You know, he's not an everyday player, but if he could give us, you know, 20, 30, 45 minutes, maybe he could give us a little bit of a spark. All right, so the next up, guys, I'll just go over real quick because they're just sort of backup players. Uh, people we're bringing in as either sort of like tutors or just squad depth. Uh, people we can rotate in and out. So let's just go through them quickly. I'll take you guys to their player screens uh, just so you see their stats. The first up is Ilya Lan Lantertov. Uh, <laughs> the Lantern, I think, would be an appropriate nickname for this guy. Backup goalkeeper, not amazing in any regard, but it seems to be just a solid player all around. The sort of guy that, you know, if our number one goes down, I'm not going to feel too upset about plugging this guy in. So just a solid goalkeeper all around. He's sort of a project. He's only 23. So you, yeah, you could call him a, uh, you know, maybe he should be in sort of that hot prospect list. But, you know, goalkeepers are weird because their prime doesn't come until much later. At 23, you'd probably say he was old for a typical prospect, or at least older for a typical prospect. But goalkeepers, they're sort of like ageless. They don't hit their prime until super late. So this guy has a ton of room to grow. Uh, but even with his current skill set, I think he would just be a solid, you know, sort of like plug and play goalkeeper. Next up, we have a central defender backup, Alexander Marchenko. You know, looking, you're going to see, obviously, right away, there are some hole in his, holes in his game. You know, you look at his pace, he's pretty slow. You look at things like his position, he's not great. His heading's awful. And, you know, he's another guy, he's an older sort of prospect. He's 23. Maybe he doesn't ever hit his potential, or maybe he gets close, but it's just not that much. But this was just a guy, like, the things I really like is I love that 16 marking. I love that 13 tackling. I think he has enough strength. He has enough jumping ability. He has good size about him. His mentals are fairly good. Maybe you like to see the composure a little bit higher. You'd like to see uh, the determination higher, and definitely I would like to see the positioning higher. 
But I think as a guy that, you know, if I need an emergency defender, I look at that marking, I look at that tackling, I look at his size and his strength, and I think, you know, this is a guy that I could just plug into my squad. Don't have to be too worried about, you know, obviously we're we're going to be looking at things like balls over the top are going to kill him. Um, so maybe when he comes in the game, we have to drop down our, uh, our back line a little bit. But overall, I think this is a guy that I could just kind of plug in and not have to worry too much about. And that's kind of what I'm looking for in a backup with, you know, he has some room to grow, which is also very nice. Next up, we have Andre the Secret Sekretov. This guy gives us a lot of versatility. He could just play in a lot of positions. We could put him in DM if we need. We could have him as a central midfielder if we need. We could put him out on the wing if we need. There's just a lot of versatility. He's extremely well-rounded, sort of a jack-of-all-trades, perhaps master of none. But I think he has some very, very solid stats, and that 16 determination is awesome. Definitely going to be using this guy as a tutor. You know, I think this is a very good capture for us i think he's just an all-around just a solid player and he's a guy that he's going to be able to spot start for us he's going to be able to come off the bench uh basically play anywhere that we need him to play which i absolutely love and lastly we have fedor dvornikov fedora we have fedora uh oh well i like his little heart there <laughs> it's not quite a smooth heart it has a little indent there i kind of like it i like the heart it's a it's a pretty attribute match uh map so this guy's coming in as sort of our backup striker, maybe a guy we plug in when we want to switch things up tactically. Just everything about him screams just a traditional sort of like big, strong target man. He's six foot four. He's an absolute beast. He has 14 strength, 16 jumping. Nobody is going to beat this guy in the air. You look at him and the biggest sort of like downfall with him, especially in this target man role is he only has six heading which is an absolute killer you wish he was better with his head but even if he's not the most accurate of headers he's absolutely going to win every ball in the air and you know just with the pure amount of chances he's going to, he's going to create by winning balls he's going to put him in the back of the net and he has that ability with that 14 finishing so this isn't a guy we're going to be looking to you to score a ton of goals for us He's not a guy we're going to be looking to to plug in every day, but he's somebody that we can plug in um, either in an emergency uh, when our first choice striker is struggling, or maybe if we want to switch things up tackling, this is a guy who has goals in him. There are some obvious holes in his game, uh, but this guy, he's a huge physical presence. And I mean, he just allows us some sort of uh, tactical versatility, which I do enjoy. So this is taking a little bit longer than I wanted to. I know I was going to say quick, we are, I'm trying to get through this as fast as I can. Uh, so we have three more players to look at. These are our sort of first team players. The first up is we have uh, Ilya Goltayev. I'm just going to call him Goldan because that's what his name reminds me of. So with Goldan, he can play a uh, central defender. He can play DM. I'm thinking given his stats we see that 10 strength which isn't amazing it is only 5 foot 11 so maybe not completely suited to central defender but he is a guy that we can either rotate with somebody or can play there in an emergency probably more likely we're going to see him being used as a defensive mid he's the sort of guy where i'm not sure if we see look at his stats and we see superstar um, but overall, I mean, he doesn't really have anything in his game that I can complain about. Just a solid, solid player overall. Perhaps, like I said, not a superstar, but we are getting him in his prime. We're going to have him for, you know, a year or two, uh, hopefully before he starts showing the first signs of decline. Just overall, a solid player. He's not going to wow us uh, all the time, but he's also not going to let us down, which is even more important. Just solid all-around player. Next up, we have Gravorg. Uh, we're, well, I'm just not going to try. We're going to call him Artie. Uh, this is Artie. He's 22. He has a little bit more room to grow. Um, might not ever hit that four-star potential, but this is a guy we could easily see be a 3.5-star player. You know, looking at his stats, he's specialized. Um, you know, he's not the most well-rounded of players, but we see that 15 acceleration, and he has pretty good pace at 12, but that acceleration is really what we're looking at. He is going to be able to get past any defender in this league with that first step. He has pretty decent crossing at nine, not fantastic, um, but he's good with the ball on his feet. And even better, he has that 13 finishing. He gives us an additional scoring threat, 
which I love. Just because our system, I mean, you're looking at our striker, you're looking at our box-to-box -box mid, but outside of that, we don't really have a scoring threat. Um, so it's nice to have a winger out there that can put the ball in the back of the net just to give us that additional threat, just to give uh, opposing defenses that extra thing that they have to think about. Super excited about this guy. He's going to have a little bit of room to grow. And I think getting that first team every uh, day playing experience is really going to sort of elevate this guy and take him to the next level. All right. And the very last player we have is our first choice keeper. This is Alexi Solison. Um, just an overall extremely solid keeper. If you had to say he had one knock against him, he's slow. He is definitely slow. This is a guy that is probably not going to come off his line or at least shouldn't come off his line a whole bunch. I know he has that 14 eccentricity, which means he is going to come off his line and do some crazy things, uh, but he doesn't have the pace for it, but hopefully he can make up for that. He has good positioning it's pretty good in the air he's very strong he has good bounce there's a lot to like about this guy that eccentricity mixed with the poor pace though could potentially cause disaster in some scenarios but overall i think this is just a solid capture for us um he's 31 he's in his prime we're gonna have him sort of at the top of his game for the next you know two three years uh, but he's not going to prove any. This is it. This is the guy we're getting. Um, so a few minor holes here and there. But overall, I think this is a pretty solid capture for us. So last thing I want to look at before we get into this game is the preseason predictions. Now, headed into this offseason, we were sort of predicted to be a playoff team. And, you know, when I went through the pep talks with the players, like, hey, these are our predictions for the season. It was all about we're, we're, we're going to be a playoff team. We are making the playoffs. Everybody was pumped. Everybody agreed with that. Then the summer transfer window hit and all of a sudden the board was like, you know, you really kind of screwed up the squad. Uh, this is the, you know, this was a squad that was sort of getting close to the playoff last season and you just completely dismantled it. Absolutely dismantled it. Uh, so now our expectation is don't get relegated. If you could not get relegated, we'll be fine. But you see, we're predicted to be mid-table. Uh, personally, I think I put together a pretty good squad. I'm not sure what you guys think, but personally, I think I did a go okay job this summer. Um, there are some definite holes in the team right now that are going to be addressed. I'm working on a deal to bring in a first team striker. I'm working on a deal to bring in a left fullback. And also I need to bring in one more defensive mid, I think. Um, either a defensive mid or a central defender. So I'm still not done making moves. I have a few more moves that I want to make. Um, but I think we have a good mix of players that are either in their prime, about to hit their prime. And then we have some, a few, uh, sort of older prospects that, you know, may improve here as they get some more playing time. So I think we have a good mix of players. Top half is definitely in the picture. I think once again, we will be sort of vying for that uh, last playoff spot. At least that's my personal prediction. Let me know in the comments what you think, um, especially after we get to see this first game. You guys have a bit of an idea of how the team plays. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and just jump straight into this first match. Okay, guys, so we're going up against Arsenal Tula, who were recently relegated from the Russian top division. So this is going to be a pretty tough matchup. We do see uh, Katrich there who is our, oh, and Bozen. Catchers and Bozen, both are former players there. So a little bit of an added incentive for us, even though we, we got along pretty good with Catchers and Bozen. Uh, but like I said in the last episode, I always like sticking it to our old players. Uh, but this is a good team. They were recently relegated. So we do have a tough matchup on our hands, especially since we do have some uh, selection issues. Uh, Cuckoo Kachu is suspended this match. He got a red card last season and still needs to serve that suspension. And Kiri is also out injured. Um, so you don't have a lot of depth in the squad. Like I said, I'm still bringing in some people to fill out the squad. So we have a lot of young players on our bench. A few of them are being plugged in. We're going to go up with uh, Dvornikov. Uh, Fedora, I believe is what we called him in the earlier. Going with Fedora up top. Artie, The Secret, Alvarez Suarez, and Chikanchi. In the midfield we didn't go over chikanchi he was a guy who got promoted uh to the senior squad this season he was with our under 21s last season konovalov uh goldan Inse, and a rat make up our back line and solison is in goal with this squad uh, so just playing with the one defensive mid 
do see early chance here. We do clear well. Can we deal with the second ball in? That is going to be... He gets credit. That should be an own goal. That took quite a deflection. Wow, we really should have done better there. That was just a simple, simple cross. Far post. Really. So this is definitely not the start to the season we wanted. We are down 2-0 still. You know, possession's fairly even, but we are not doing anything with the ball. And there we just get beat with a super simple through ball. So we get a free kick, our first highlight of the game. We do find it, hey, just like that. We pulled back one. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, this should be the last highlight any minute now. We're going to hear the whistle, and there it is. So we dropped the first game of the season, three to one. Not the way at all I wanted to start the season. Just looking at the stats, it's so depressing. They have the 18 shots, um, which could potentially be manageable. You would expect them to score maybe two goals to, you know, three goals isn't out of the question on the 18 shots. Uh, the thing that is concerning is 11 of those were on target. That is a ridiculous amount. That's not what we want to see. It means our defense was just poor. We weren't organized. We were giving, you know, we were too exposed, giving up too much space. Okay, so we got blown out our first game. Uh, you know, blowouts happen. <laughs> I don't want to make too many excuses because there's really not anything to excuse there. That was just a poor, poor game. Not the way I wanted to start the season. Not the way I wanted this episode to go. I, I apologize. You know, the team just, we just weren't ready. And that falls 100% on me. Going forward, though, we will get better. I promise. I still think, despite the blowout, I still think this is going to be a very good team. I think we are going to have a very successful campaign here in the 2019-2020 season. You guys just saw how we played. I would ask that you take that with a grain of salt. But let me know how you think this team is going to do. <laughs> I'm not expecting too many good answers there, especially with how that game went. But let me know in the comments how you think things are going to play out. Let me know where you think we will finish. You guys saw the projection. Uh, you saw some of the players we brought in. You just saw a horrible first game. Uh, but let me know. Be sure to like and favorite the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again to the 60 of you who have already done so. Looking forward to the next 60. Uh, follow along on Twitter where you'll get all of the updates first. Um, that's where I'm most active and you guys hear everything first. So be sure to follow me on Twitter at johnny 2 thumb 17 Also follow along with the companion blog to this series. Uh, will work for food. You can find that at tmbuskets.com. The link for that will be down below in the description. Working on the next chapter for that, it will probably cover the summer transfer window. Uh, not necessarily tactical analysis because you could find sort of my analysis of the players on Twitter, which is why you need to follow me on there. Um, but it'll sort of be like a story that goes along with the summer transfer window. So that is in progress. That should be up. Uh, hopefully by the time this video gets up, so be sure to check out teambuscuts.com. Look for the blog. It's will work for food. Until next time, guys, I am sorry that this is how this episode went. I It's you know it's just as shocking to you as it is to me. Not how I planned to get things started, but it was a real test. Arsenal Tula, like I said, was relegated from the Russian top tier. It was a real big test for us. Brand new squad. We're still feeling things out. There's still work to be done. There are holes to be filled within the squad. Things will get better, though. You know, it's not all gloom and doom. It is just one match. It's the first match of the season. This is a marathon, not a sprint. So there's plenty of time to turn it around. So until next time, guys, peace.